haven't uh, done any questions and and anything for a few days if we have some and so I think we covered most of the, the what to do for Ramadan. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam Wa If interacting with negative people is unavoidable, is there something to read or do when you feel like they are draining you? Forgive my ignorance. Walaikum As Salaam all the practices that we've been teaching. So all the energy, all the meditation, all of these practices is the assumption of negative energy everywhere. So it's important to live a life of training and it's not uh, a life of running and having fear and making a whole bunch of cowardly people. This is a way of chivalry, this is a way in which to learn the reality, build the energy, fortify oneself of uh, madad and support and whatever your fate is in life you face it. I fear not even though I walk through the valley of death for I know that Allah is with me. So it means we don't run from places, we're not scared of anything, not scared of anyone. So this is not about learning about energy and then locking yourself in the house to be scared and cowardly from everything. Not that this question is related to that but many questions that are coming in from the email is like everybody's you know, trying to run and, and, and uh, be a coward and to, to run into the bushes and into the woods and what is that about? This wasn't about that, there's nowhere to run. If Allah went you dead, you're dead, just where are you going? When, when the flood for Sayyidina Nu came his, his son got scared saying that where I'm going to go on your boat, I found my own mountain. He said, this is a ship of salvation, enter the ship, where are you going to run to? So this teachings of energy is not to make people run for the woods and now fear the going out and, and scared to do, to do everything. But this was a haqqaiq to come and to build ourselves. That Allah didn't leave us alone, He didn't leave us to be weak, build your energy, build your connection, ask for this immense support of madad and walk with them with the support, with madad, with energy and everywhere you go if you're good, your character is good, know that Allah is with you and every test that come to you it's an energy. You process it, you build it, you do your zikr from it, you don't go run and hide in your closet, what are you going to do like that? So it's very important to build one's energy in this whole teaching is not about creating a state of fear but a state of awareness, how I should be training, how I should be building my energy, how I should be building my practices. And it's, it's very delicate, we have many different teachings, that which you focus on focuses on you. So if you remember from Lord of the Rings because Allah teaches all His creation, Allah loves all His creation otherwise why would He have created them? There's not a creation that Allah doesn't love. So it means He created His creation, He loves them and He wishes to guide all His creation. So many of the creation are being guided through movies through media, through billboards, through signs. The signs of Allah are everywhere and programmers know that. If Allah wrote the code for everything, of course you put a code in a billboard when you're asking and thinking to yourself. Many times you drive all of a sudden a license plate in front of you is a code. We've been driving many times on the road, you look at the license plate in front of you and it's a code. You look at a billboard it's a code because Allah knows when He wrote the program you would be driving on this road at that time. Can you be there without Allah having wrote it? Are you anywhere that Allah didn't write? So you're like out of His program? Every step, everything you put, every breath you take Allah wrote it. He knows exactly when you were supposed to be there, you looked up and He knew that He wrote that for you. So everything has a sign. But do all people have an eye to see it? Do they have a heart to understand it? So it means that this way of tafakkur Allah is then teaching, sign up with these people they're going to teach you about these programmings. They teach you how to stop and breathe and meditate, contemplate, build your energy. 
Not so you have fear but so that you feel a force of energy and, and madad and support to come. And don't focus on you know if you, if you watch our videos and then think, okay I'm going to watch 10,000 negative videos on scary subjects. No, ours is a clickbait. Mahdi puts a nice thumbnail so you want to click it but it's the same calm me talking. We don't have any crazy subjects we talk about. But don't take the subject and say, now I'm going to low, go watch 10,000 crazy videos on conspiracies and make myself scared and want to run into the woods. Where are you going to run? Uh, out of the, the threshold of shaykhs to be by yourself? No, this is not what this subject is about, this is not what this reality is about. You're missing the whole context of how this is happening. This reality is to give you an understanding that your dunya has to drop. When they teach you these realities, teach you these energies, teach you these signs, you should be just, Samina wa tana, I heard this talk, I'm understanding this desire for my dunya achievement and, and going crazy with dunya is, is going down, down, down and I begin to see the heavens. I want to be with the heavens, I want to take my dunya desire down and my soul's energy to connect. So Akhira and the, all the important players of Akhira Zaman, they're behind the pardeh. If your dunya desire drops that pardeh is lifted and you're with them. You feel their tajalli, you receive their guidance. But if these practices are leading you to want to run, you're doing something wrong because that's something different. That has nothing to do with your dunya desire going. That seems to be more your dunya desire is so strong you want to be from the people who live a thousand years. And that's when we talked about before the, some of these movies, everything is collapsing and the guy is just running into the woods. Where is he running to the woods? Where is he going? He's trying to go hide to live another 10 years? To go to, 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 to do what? It wasn't about that at all, it was about whatever fate is coming you face your fate. It was about making your connection, the desire to drop and Allah will open for you the spiritual realm to see and to be with them, to receive from their tajallis, to receive from their guidances. So this was not a, a state in which to, to make pandemonium and fear and and now everybody's scared of this person has energy, that person has energy, yeah, who cares about anybody's energy? Do they have any energy compared to all those of a gem? Somebody come and say, they're doing black magic on me. Can anyone do any magic on you if Allah's with you? The fact that you feel anything wrong, there's something in the force and in the practices that Allah's teaching is not right. Because if you do the system, you do the madad, you do the zikrs, you keep yourself in wudu, you keep yourself in their practices, then this energy of Allah from Atiullah, Ki Rasul wa ulul amri minkum, this is like a shell of energy is around that servant. Who, who has magic that can deal with that? Who has the ability to alter Allah's will? It's, it's not even something you can even think about, talk about, it's, it's so ridiculous and childish. But because it's a school then it's like a boxing class. Allah sends somebody to you and begin to smack you around a little bit. And then you say, well how he smack me around? Say, but how come you didn't take your self-defense class Well, you don't know how to deal with any of this? So the madad and the meditation is a self-defense class, how do you build your energy, how do you make your connection, how do you do your zikr and how do you do it all the time? Oh I didn't know I was supposed to do the awrad all the time. Well if you, if you know that somebody coming and smacking you around from the spiritual world and, and that spiritual guy he's doing it every day smacking you around, it, the devil doesn't take a break. 
So because negativity is consistently going after people, then people who are positive they don't take breaks. They have to do their zikr, they do their awrah, they do their madha, they build their energy, they, they keep with all their practices to build that shield of energy, that force of energy inshaAllah. And they should be gaining faith in which they face their fate. So imagine yourself now as one of the sahaba, choose either of the four and say, which one are you like? Did any of them ever say, I'm taking off, I'm running, sorry Ya Rasul, Ya Rasul Kareem, I'm heading out to the woods, bye bye, see you guys. Do you have any stories of the four companions doing that? <laughs> no, <laughs> who does that? <laughs> exactly. So it means the faith when you know it's working, it's just strong, you're solid. That I feel yaqeen, I feel the connection, I feel my energy, I feel my love, that's it. I'm exactly where Allah wants me to be, not moving, not happening, exactly what Allah wants is going to happen. So then the reality of faith is that you, be hak you become someone of yaqeen and certainty, inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyid, a few people asking the same question, <coughs> similar question. That's nice. Did they contact each other? <laughs> no, not this one. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Barakatuh Sayyidi, um, please guide us on how we can manage our time between school and our practices. <coughs> you get a day organizer and you write down in your organizer, Akhirah requires much more organizational skills than dunya. So anyone in, in who's got a job or went to school, especially school, you have a day organizer. You say from 9 o'clock in the morning all the way to your 10 o'clock at night sleeping, organize your day and exactly organize your time. So I wake up, I eat breakfast, I have my coffee, I, I do this, I do that and then this is where I'm going to do my awrah, this is where I'm going to do my zikr, this is where I'm going to do my salawats. I mean go to work, when I drive home this is when I'm going to make more salawats, this is when I'm going to, to do this practice. And you make your life very organized. Uh, Allah is expecting more from you than your job. Just because the job is giving you a, a physical paycheck, you're paying more respect to it. And that's not the people of faith, that the people of faith they pay more respect to Allah because He's really giving the paycheck. The other guy is just the bozo in the middle, he's the fake one. If Allah is not happy with you, there's no paycheck to come to you. And if Allah loves you, there's nobody who can fire you. So means then the ihtiram is always with Allah I plan my day, I plan my awrah, I plan my expenses, I plan everything and my life is not random. Because everyone's doing like, oh I'll just do the awrah at night. Well you know the shaitan plays with you, 11 o'clock you're sleepy you can't do your awrah. And if you sleep without an awrah then imagine you did not pay your alarm bill. So you don't know the state of your protection now because you're not doing the connection. And if you miss it in one day you can go into 30 days of difficulty with no connection. So they take it with a very serious level, why? Because there's a istiqam, there's a firmness, there's a sincerity. When awliyaullah are seeing the awrads are being done then they can grant more openings and that's not us, we're just the training people. But when our shaykhs are watching all of us and see that they do it, they do it, they do it, then more fires can come to the servant because it won't cause them harm. But when they watch that they do it, then they don't do it, then they do it, then they don't do it, why would you send them something that would cause them harm? And that's when Ayatul Kareem Allah says, don't ask for that which will cause you difficulty. Because if you're not consistent and these lights and energies come to you, of course you're going to come under attack. The devils want what is coming to you and they know that you don't keep yourself protected. One day you turn your house alarm on, next day you don't have alarm, next day you have alarm, next day you don't have alarm and tomorrow you announce, I have a whole bunch of jewelry, diamonds and gold in my house. And they're going to come and attack it. So everything is common sense, when we're consistent, consistent, consistent then these fires and openings can come because they see that the servant is consistent.
then Allah gives permission, Prophet give permission and then Allah give a, a faiz and a permission the emanation reach out to the servant. If they don't see the consistency then you could imagine it would cause harm for the servant. And then Allah said, don't ask for that would, would cause you difficulty and harm, InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If I don't email for a long time, do I lose the, the connection? Email for a long time? No, the concept of the emailing was is not that you have to call and or email and say hi today and you know had dinner last night, it was really good and it's, it's to keep the connection and line of communication as far as events in your life so that you understand the concept of guidance. So that I'm about to, to do this, please give me some guidance, I'm, I'm having difficulty on this, uh, then you'll probably get an email back that you need to be meditating because the connection is not strong and the base of everything is how are you making your tafakkur and your contemplation. If the tafakkur and contemplation is not strong every difficulty is coming from that. Because well, what you're going to get if, if your connection with the awliya are not strong and then that connection if it's not strong then the connection with Prophet is not strong and that's the source of uh, ismuhu dawas wa zikruhu shifas is every medicine and every healing is that light that come from Allah and from Prophet into our being. So it comes by this concept of muraqabah, tafakkur, sitting, contemplating, just me from your fires, just me from the light, just sitting with myself, getting to know myself and every night just a little bit, little bit, little bit until my connection is strong, my practices are strong. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the reality behind getting dressed by a blue light during meditation when connecting with the shaykh? Alhamdulillah each one to a different, we don't want to say anything because then everybody will say, well I didn't have a blue light. So everything is to everyone's requirement but uh, a Bahr Qudra and uh, oceans of power they have many different sort of shades of light, can be a blue light, can be a violet light, can be white light. These are different spectrums of, of light and a dressing of the light. So it's unique to that individual, it's not that everybody has to be because then 10,000 emails come that where's my blue light. So it's just a matter of being conscious of lights, sitting and, and making your salawats, asking to be dressed by power, to be dressed by energies. And alhamdulillah don't focus too much on, on the colors, if you see all color then alhamdulillah and that's, that's, that's good. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What are the different types of meditation and which ones should we do daily? Mm, we have them all listed, the meditation on how to connect your heart is most important on how to connect with the shaykhs, how to do the madad. Then when you're meditating you sit and practice how to breathe so that you connect your breath and breathe and how to receive the fires of the shaykhs and to be dressed by the fires and, and to annihilate oneself. So it's, it's basically two, three steps of meditation and that's it, you, you, which one is, is adhering to you, you have to do the connection as the base, how to connect with the shaykh, how to reach the fires of the shaykh, the lights to enter into the heart. And then you can go deeper and that you want to learn how to breathe and, and bring the, the qudra and the breath of that energy onto the heart. So alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What can we do when our nafs become very rebellious when we are getting more into the practices? more rebellious. Yeah, you, you just have to sort of give it some chocolate, give it some candy, something for your nafs to, to calm down. It may be hangry, we're <laughs> hungry and angry. So there are, there are times like after zikr, the reason they give everyone sweets after zikr was to tame their nafs and to give everything a calm down because the energy is, is a lot of jalali. 
So the Jamali aspect and softness comes with giving the dates or sweets after the zikr. So anytime we do practices that may be very sort of heavy as far as that what they're talking about, they do practice heavy, they feel like a lot of sort of energy on them, then they go and have something sweet and something to calm themselves down and distract themselves from what they were doing. If you're reading Dalal Khirat and all sorts of you know bad thoughts are coming and, and because the shaitans are trying to attack you. You do lots of salawats, reading Dalal Khirat and all of a sudden the devils are starting to send all sorts of bad thoughts and bad images trying to stop you from the practices. And that's, that is the struggle with oneself on how to struggle with the self, continue the practices and uh, inshaAllah you just keep fighting through it. That is what is you know described as, as a great battle on how to, to keep uh, pushing, pushing, pushing until the nafs uh, is burning from these practices. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Alhamdulillah we stay silent when mocked, how do we deal with praise from parents, relatives etc. It makes us uncomfortable when they do so. Yeah, now you can't parents are naturally proud of their children and you just you know try to have a humble character and say, oh astaghfirullah you know, and you know people praise all the time but it, it, it's, it's trying to negate its importance is important but not to take it and, and feel happy with it and, and want somebody to praise even more. But for parents that's the, the natural state of parents that they're proud of their children and they want to, to express that, that satisfaction. And mocking or, or somebody saying things, if, if you can remain silent then alhamdulillah but never to take abuse, this is not about you know being abused by people and, and remaining in a position of abuse. So it, this is about a path of humility that, that we don't have to answer back to everything somebody says. If somebody's saying something bad and we can sort of avoid it and just stay silent then alhamdulillah we try our best. And when, when people want to praise then we try to push down the, the praising. So. And this is, this is the struggle again, this is the, the way of the struggle and how to, to find the balance in life so that we're not happy uh, attacking people and, and pushing people to praise us, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa For long time after wearing the taweez my nightmares mm. stopped but now I have nightmares time to time. Can you please help me with this? Forgive me Sayyidi. Yeah, the, the taweez alhamdulillah is, is just one aspect, again you know the, the concept of diet coke or diet cola is that people think because it's diet they can have a lot of it. <laughs> so if you had one coke regular they say it's diet coke, I can have five of them. So sometimes they, they think, okay I put this taweez, I can do anything I want now. So that wasn't the concept, the taweez is by Izzatullah anyways. So everything coming by permission of Allah But these are what the believer does as a sign of humility. They are, Ya I'm weak servant, I'm asking for support. And then we put the taweez by Izzatullah that I'm a weak servant, let me to keep my sunnah. I'm a weak servant, let me keep my hat. So I'm doing everything for Allah's satisfaction. And that I'm trying to take myself to the direction of heavenly people. So we have to just make sure that we're not you know doing this like a superman and go out and do anything we want and so oh, now it was working and defending me against all these bad things and now it's not because the purpose was to adorn ourselves with a heavenly armour, right? So it's not one item is miraculous. The whole image is supposed to be miraculous. I get my ring because I want to emulate the reality of Prophet So okay this is now one step. I have my asa because I want to copy the way of my beloved king. I have my uh, amameh, then I have my, my, my beard, all these things when you put it all together now you are an exemplar of faith in the image and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So you must be then acting like that too. 
So it wasn't like I get a ring, I go to a nightclub now and I can, I, I'm going to be defending against difficult things or, or bad things. So it's a matter of putting all these pieces together so eventually you look like a paradise person and you should be acting like a paradise person. So it was just a piece of the puzzle to take us towards our heavenly reality, inshaAllah. بعث إن شاء الله إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على صحابي الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العلية وسائر وصداتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة. Click the link now to subscribe.